It's fascinating to watch what bubbles to the surface at the end of the year. Bubbles of hope. A shot, the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year title. Yeah! Well, that one's been settled by the great Aaron Martins. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year! But the other top title is the Geico Bassmaster Classic, the World Championship. And to get there, you just may have There's to do one. some time on the bubble. Ah! Ah! Yeah! As you try to push your way into the field for 2016. To come all this way and have your bubble burst on the final day? It's now or never in the final hours of the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship final day. This is a day you definitely want to be fishing because you have made it all the way in the 2015 Bassmaster Elite Series season. You haven't done the championship. That's been settled already. Hey, hats off one more time to the man, Aaron Martin. Absolutely, and I think we have covered this. Really, it feels like for the last three months, what Aaron Martins has done in the 2015 season, we have said this, possibly the best season on the Elite Series ever. As statistically, it absolutely has been, and he has won this one in absolutely dominating fashion. So Aaron Martin, we salute you one more time. Like every other tournament, though, you got to wonder who's catching him, who's leading this thing, and we do have a leader. In fact, it's the guy who won this award last year. Exactly right, Greg Hackney. And here's the weird dynamic right now. If you look at what Greg Hackney has done in this event, he's sitting on about a four-pound average. But here's the dynamic here, gang. You ready? He's only catching about five to six bass a day, but they're definitely the right one. Uh, and then, which would be a pressure cooker situation, except for Hackney, he's already in, he doesn't care, he's just enjoying it. Basically, Greg Hackney's on a fishing trip right now. Another angler who is locked in the classic, looking for his first win on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Chris Zaldane, and here's the weird thing going on here at Sturgeon Bay. Uh, Chris Zaldane, unlike Hackney, he said, look, man, I am catching a pile of them, and Greg Hackney better catch them. Zaldane coming off the best season he's ever had as a Bassmaster Elite Series competitor, looking to win this one. A win here counts in your win column. It's just the same as winning a regular season event, so Zaldane in good shape. But here's the guys we're talking about for sure, right? The bubble guys, Mark Zimmer. Exactly right, and you really don't get a gauge for how stressful it is for the guys that are contending for the 2016 Bassmaster Classic. One of them who had a huge tournament the last time we were at Grand Lake, where we're heading next year, Mike Iconelli. And really, his Achilles heel of this season was in his backyard, Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, well, that and Gunnersville, where he had a, a dominating lead and lost it all right there. Had to be a mental sort of defeat for him. But he's battled back. This guy battles back as much as anybody ever. Ish Monroe, a home run hitter by his own confession, and though he doesn't want us to say that about him anymore, but he is going to have to be consistent over this week. He's the BBS, the big bass specialist. Bad. I'm not going to lie, we have not covered Ish Monroe in many oh. smallmouth tournaments. Not really his wheelhouse. He'll tell you, man, I like being shallow, fishing for big largemouth. He knows he has to catch him on this final Absolutely. day. Absolutely, just about has to win our top three places at the very worst. We got one more angle we're gonna look out here. Gerald Swindle, always knocking at the door to get into that classic. He never won a classic, but he's got his work cut out for him on this final day. And, and the weird thing with Swindle right now is usually he is happy-go-lucky, everything's going right. That is not the case. He is keyed up. He is another guy who is not catching very many fish in the, in the space of any of these days here. Gerald Swindle, definitely a guy we're gonna have our eyes on on this final day of competition. Exactly right, and Swindle, basically, here's the best way to put it. He has to put about 16 to 18 pounds of fish in the boat, or he'll have no prayer. Davey Hyde, our own Davey Hyde. Yes, out there with him. Joining Swindle on the water right now, early on the final day. Okay, this is final day, AOI Championship 2015. It all comes down to this. Tell me what's going on in, in your mind. Well, you, you dream of days like this as a kid. You probably stood around the pond making a cast out there saying, oh, the Bassmasters Classic's on the line. i got to catch one fish. This is that day. This is the day we dreamed about. Yep, I'm a bubble guy. I need to be where uh, 40th or above to go to the Classic. But, you know, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. You're in the top 50 at, at Sturgeon Bay, and, and what a great event. Uh, I'm not really – it's been really weird this week, Davey. I haven't really felt the pressure. Uh, I come up here with one goal of mine is to fish the best event that I can and catch 20 pounds of smallmouth in one day, and that, that's what my goal is today. Good luck, Gerald. Thanks, man. Well, for Gerald Swindle and several others, it's all about the points today, and right on that cut line of 40 is Gerald Swindle, the ultimate bubble position. Ish Monroe, Brandon Card, Billy McCagrin, Mark Davis, 
Brandon Lester all wondering what their fate will be after this third and final day. The Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship is brought to you by GoPro. Humminbird. Mercury. And by Mencota. This is it, the last day of the season, the last day of Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. 50 anglers still in this thing. Of course, a lot of them have it made. They've qualified for the Geico Bassmaster Classic. Some other anglers, it's a very desperate day. You have to be 40th or better to tentatively qualify for the Geico Bassmaster Classic. So a lot of guys are grinding today. A couple of guys, though, trying to win this event, which counts as a win on your record. Greg Hackney's the guy on top, followed by Chris Zaldane. All right, it's 6.30 and 20 seconds. I'm really anxious to get out to my spot. Uh, I thought about it all night, I really did, so uh, I figured if I catch over 20 pounds, I'll have a legitimate shot at winning this tournament, so I'm a pound and a quarter behind that man right over there. The only thing I can do is catch over 20 pounds and uh, hope he stumbles a little bit. I really feel like, you know, for me to win today, I need at least 20 pounds. I mean, because, well, Zaldane, he's very capable of catching 20, he's already done that. There's potential here to catch a bigger bag than that. So I would think if I was in that 20, 21 pound range, that would be enough to finish the deal. Today it's a little bit calmer out there, which is great. We're gonna just go out there and fish and have fun and let the cards lie where they lie. Is you know, it's pretty much what it's gonna be. It's all on the line. The next eight hours, the most important eight hours of my entire season. Folks at home, folks at home, come on, let's go. Ready to go right now with the five guys that we'll be following on this final day, Mark Zona. Let's uh, set them up for these people. Exactly right. Greg Hackney, your leader, or one of the only anglers that's heading south, fishing right in front of Riley Base. And Chris Zaldane up the peninsula. Mike Iconelli outside of the town of Ephraim. Gerald Swindle out of Chambers Island. Ish Monroe kind of been hanging around the Sister Island area this whole event. Folks, this tournament has been all over the map. Guys catching them out in 30 to 50 feet of water, all the way up to Mike Iconelli, who's really been concentrating at 5 to 10 feet. But that being said, Iconelli, he told us, I am not getting a lot of bites in this tournament. That's why I'm kind of stressed out. But there's a very, very small window, the first 45 minutes of each morning, where I know I can get three to four solid bites. There's one. Good one, too. Big one. Stay on there. Oh, big one. Yeah, big one. No, no. Oh, God. Five pounder. I need this one. This one is, this one is just going to get my morning going right here. Stay on there, please, God. It is a giant, giant. Please, God. Take your time, Mike. Take your time, Mike. Take your time, Mike. Oh my god, that's wild. Five pounder. <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> Punch myself in the face. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And that's gonna be the Evan Williams Bourbon shot of the day, of the week, of the year, Tommy. Tommy Sanders, is it fair to say this move right here? It's when he finds that Bad. water bottle. Yes. That is a Sports Center top ten moment oh, in my book. Fishing it out and banging yourself in the head with it. That is fantastic for Michael Iaconelli. Let's move on over to Ish Monroe. Ish Monroe banging on the door. Two days of strong fishing only have him at 41st place. He's got to make the needle move, make the meter go up today. You know, 
the pressure for me is gone. The, you know, and that was what happened when uh, the first day I was, you know, in 13th and one point out, then there was a little pressure. Like, okay, so day two, you go out and still just kind of relaxed and went fishing and moved up six places and still one point out. So right now, there is no pressure. I probably got the best night of sleep that I could get because I'm over it. You know, I'm over trying to make the classic and just trying to get a bite. Monroe, not a huge one, but that's a start for his day to day. He's going to have to, again, pick it up just a little bit. Uh, in spite of what he says there, there is a bit of pressure on Ish Monroe today if he wants to make the Geico Bassmaster Classic. Slide back south, Sturgeon Bay Peninsula right here, Door County. County yep. Sanders, Chris mm -hmm. Aldane, full of confidence coming into this final day. And unlike your leader, Greg Hackney, Chris Aldane said, Look, man, I'm catching 20 to 30 a day. It's been easy sledding not the case here on our final morning. It's tough today, dude. It's the opposite way. It's a lot cooler. My starting spot doesn't have any bait on it. see a hook mark in and around the mouth. Oh, well, maybe there will, yeah, right there, look it. That's a hook mark. We'll call it fair. Chris Aldane, 18-2 on day one, day two. He backs it up with 20 pounds and three ounces. And now with that fish, he has taken over the lead from Greg Hackney. So we got a Bassmaster Angler of the Year championship, and we will look back on 2014 and last year's champion. There he is, Greg Hackney, when we come back. God dang it. Big him. You're watching the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year championship. Would you please, would you just do it? Just tweet it out, hashtag Big Catch Contest. That's how we see your picture of your big bass. Derek McLaughlin from the great state of Missouri did that. Do it like Derek. Enter your photo at Bassmaster.com slash catch. We want to see those pictures of the big, large mouth and small mouth bass. Gerald Swindle needs well, a lot of the latter today. Needs to do some climbing up the leaderboard still just outside the cut line to make it into the Geico Bassmaster Classic. And this is the day he's got to get it done. He's already nipping on a few little dog. They, they get it funny out here. They did that the other day, like a little bit in, and I finally hooked him at a four pounder. but I think he is. I mean, he ain't a giant, but he could be 14. He might be. Might not be. You bit the wrong cricket, though, didn't you?
there, number one. He ain't what I was looking for, but he's number one, you know what I mean? Pound and a half. Let's get us five, and I don't care what the way, and then we'll fetch us for bigging. I think it's time for some new note and nugget. Coming yes, at sir. this tournament, we did not think a 14-inch mm. smallmouth was going to mean that much. Not the case on this final day of the entire season. Yes, absolutely. Gerald Swindle, he's not kidding. When he talks about getting five of those and seeing what happens, hey, five of those might get it done for him on this final day as we slide from Gerald Swindle back over to the man who uh, started with the lead today, maintains that lead, Greg Hackney, who was the winner of the whole shooting match, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year of 2014 up in Escanaba, Michigan. It's a very challenging weather condition. Exactly right. We had days canceled, and that's when... That's when Hackney's, uh, his stress level kind of went through the charts. Way up there. On and off the water, Tommy Sanders. And here at this tournament, Hackney Ooh. has, now check this out. We're sitting right at about a four-pound average where you would say, oh, he is on the mother load. Uh, not so fast, my friend. Hackney getting five to six bites a day. And here on this final day, Greg Hackney starting off very, very slow. Well, things did not start off right earlier today. Yeah. Bigger. You know, typically by this time I have three. That's what I've had every day. And uh, this morning I've only had one on and let it get off. And it's so hard, you know, you always want to concentrate. Oh, I got bit right there, you know. And on a large mouth, they so homebody, that's typically, that's where they are, you know. But the freaking small mouth, I just pick up and move 50 yards and it'll completely jack you up. Because if you miss them by 50 yards, you might as well miss them by 5,000 yards. Well, that's been the story of this event at Sturgeon Bay. You get on big schools of fish, and they will leave in a matter of minutes. That current, that wind, will definitely shift them and shift your game plan from there. Going to slide back north up the peninsula with Mike Iaconelli and Tommy Sanders already with one big one in the boat. Yeah, Hackney looking to jump start his day. Iaconelli got his jump start very early today. A big, big smallmouth bass he got on right there. And after that, well, the celebration was on, and I mean on. I, I'm fair to say, Tommy, the celebration of the year. Yes. There's my kicker. I need four two-pounders. That's what I need. It's nice getting that one out of the way, you know? Usually it's the reverse. Usually you get your small ones and you're after a big one. We're kind of working backwards today, which is fine with me. A lot of birds. It's a good sign. Means there's bait here. Seagulls mean bait. Even if you don't see them diving, you just see them flying around. There's a, a osprey over there. Come on, fish. There he goes. Big one, too. Big one. Oh gosh, big one. Oh gosh, big one. Big, big one. Another, oh god, another four and five pounder. Yeah. Oh, oh. This one's for all my machine head fans out there. Oh. Look at that, four pounder. Right in the mouth. Look at that thing. BMC jig head. I love you, baby. Yeah. Four pounder. I'm sorry. He's happy Gilmore, Tommy. I swear he is. I've been wondering all season, when are the machine head fans going to get something? Going to get anything? <laughs> Finally, look at that. It happened today. We have Mike Iaconelli to thank for it. we got a lot more fishing. This is an important day trying to get into the Geico Bassmaster Classic. Your fate in your hands. We will come back. You're the best. The Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship is brought to you by Nitro. Skeeter Boat. Triton Boats. And by Yamaha. This is it. This is the last day of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series Angler. Postseason action in the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship. What a playing field. A Sturgeon Bay here on Lake Michigan on the western side of the beautiful Door Peninsula. Just a picture-perfect place, Mark Zona, but not an easy place to catch fish every day. No, it's not. And usually it is. I'm not going to lie. This is the tournament's kind of been in between seasons. That's going to be our Yamaha Unlock the Lake. And here's one of the biggest misconceptions 
about the Great Lakes as a whole. You look at where our wind was the first two days of this event. Coming out of the southwest, it was very stable. When you have a wind shift, here's what happens. There is so much current in the Great Lakes, basically it repositions everything. The smallmouth on the Great Lakes, especially here, are very pelagic. They want to roam around and chase the bait fish. And literally, your whole entire game plan could change within a matter of minutes here. Well, my primary area didn't have the bait fish in it like I'd hoped. Now that the wind's blowing, I think we're, we're gonna be good on it later in the day, but this is this is like a, this is a plan D, plan E. I mean, we tried my secondary and third spot with nothing on it, but as we rolled up into this spot, I saw Ike and Ellie and uh, Chad Pipkins, and they'd already fished this. Was that, we had a funky north wind. It was like 51 degrees at takeoff this morning. It was real cold, so it's gonna take a while for these fish to get going, I think. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, stay on there, stay on there. Come here, you big beast. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> that's a monster. Woo! On the spark shed, baby. Look at that one. That's a big one. Look how pretty that thing is. It's a freaking war pig. I just drop shotted right through that ledge right there. I positioned the boat upwind, made one cast with that spark shad. That's a nice one. Best name in the Woo. history of names, a war pig. I, I, Sorry. Yeah, I beg to differ. I think you've come up with a few that, that beat that out. Maybe a book's worth as we head over to Ish Monroe. Here's a guy who really needs to intersect with a war pig or two. Get this day back on track and qualify for the classic. Wow. Oh. Got it. Came back. He's little, but we'll take him right now. In the boat. On your bag. Hook pops right out. <sighs> Barely. Boy, everything just slow and low key for Ish Monroe and just not getting it done in terms of bigger fish. A keeper there. We got two fish today, but that's uh, eighth place is not going to get it for him. Going to slide back over to Mike Iconelli right now, and you can tell he is feeling it. Two good ones in the boat today. Really, Iconelli, oh, he just needs to fill out his limit. This is an important time today. I mean, you know, we've got 1230. We're doing it three. So we got a little time left. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys' inclination with having a tough day like I'm having is to just give up, you know, but you got to keep focused because, you know, I know I'm probably one good bite away from making the classic or two or three keeper bites away from making the classic. So, you know, I'm trying to focus on every cast. I'm battling waves. I'm trying to make decisions. I'm trying to manage time. They're clearly not biting the way that they were for me today. So I'm really just trying to try some new areas and and maximize it i can tell you i'm going to fish up until 259.30 i'll i'll i'm going to press it today and that's the what that's what you got to do to win you know i got the worst luck dude i had the worst luck and the best luck depending on what day it is There's one. Good one. Good one. Good one. 
That's a good one. Keep her. Go down! It was a keeper. There's one. This is a good one. Wow, big miss right there. The only consolation, I guess, for Mike Iaconelli, he knows he's around him. Exactly. From Iaconelli, we're going to head over to Gerald Swindle, where things just have not happened so far today. Oh, there's a bunch of them right there. Oh, one hit it. I know there's another big smallmouth right here. I know it is. Don't feel very big. Oh, but he is. Get your butt up in here. Uh huh. Uh mm huh. -hmm. I don't want to hurt you, young man. Too. Just had a feeling. This much wind on this bank. I had some bites down here in practice. I even had one bite here the other day when it was sunny and slick. I missed it. Well, a little step in the positive direction for the G-man, Gerald Swindle. He, like many of the others today, stressing, really grinding hard, trying to make that Geico Classic cut. I've got two fish in the boat. And so these last couple hours, I got to make something happen or the classic's out. I don't have no 25 pound deep hole, you know. We're trying to make chicken salad out of chicken crap over here. Fishing what we got. I'm probably one good bite away from making the classic. I'm going to press it today. And that's, the, that's what you got to do to win. Welcome back. This is the last day of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Final day of Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year competition. And our eyes are locked firmly on those guys who are desperately fighting for a spot in the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic. One of those for whom today could go either way is Mark Menendez. Back in action after a year away from the game after losing his wife Donna to cancer. She was, she was the greatest thing ever. We had about 12 years together and the quality versus the lack of quantity. The quality will always overwhelm the quantity. And I know people that have been married 50 years that don't have what we had in that short time period. The only reason I came back after being off two years from helping my wife fight pancreatic cancer, the people I worked for, paychecks came in. They supported me the entire time without a question. And they didn't have to do this. What the industry has shown me is why I came back, to give back to them and show my appreciation for what they've done for the Menendez family. I've already been through the worst. If I don't make this classic, it's no sweat off my tears. I've been through the worst, so I don't have any pressure anymore. That's why I've had such a good season this year. There's two days in the season that I can look back upon and I could have been fighting with Aaron for Angler of the Year. So am I mad about that? Yeah, as a competitor I am, but as a person I'm completely changed because I've lived through the worst. Mark Menendez remains on the bubble. These bubble guys really are the story. This Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship, Gerald Swindle. Canelli, Ish Monroe, all the rest of them grinding so hard. Hey, I'm going to tell you, we've seen a different personality of a lot of the guys that are on the bubble that are usually happy go lucky. Even when they're in contention to win an event, right. you get a true gauge of what making the Bassmaster Classic is to these guys. And Gerald Swindle, only two fish in the boat, knows, well, he's got work to do yet. I feel pretty good about that, right? There. I don't have no 25 pound deep hole, you know. We're trying to make chicken salad out of chicken crap over here. Fishing what we got. Biggin. Oh, what you do? Oh, then my 
my pants. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be a mess if I can't get a hold of it. Solid fish right there for Swindle, and fair to say, very, very, very well needed. And then we're going to slide back down the peninsula for to Chris Zeldane, who has not had that big of a problem catching them and exactly what he's caught them on. I've really gotten on this real heavy in the last, I would say, two months. Um, I got introduced to it by our buddy... Our angler of the year, Aaron Martins. It's a three inch mega bass spark shad. The beauty of this bait is it's got a triangular body to it. It's got a keel to it. And I throw it on a quarter ounce ball head. And when this bait falls, it stays perfectly upright because of that keel shaped belly. And of course it's got the eyeballs, you know, in this clear water that helps. Uh, it's got the pectoral fins. It just, I mean, it looks killer. And that could represent a smelt, an alewife, or or even a shad, but um, I'm not, I'm not sh real sure what kind of bait fish are cruising around here, but I, I pay extra close attention when I see these beach ball sized balls of bait cruising around. If I see a, a ball of bait on my graph, the next three casts are real crucial to me because I, I have to make sure I'm getting it right up against the structure I see the bait fish on. That's going to be our Skeeter Boats taste the bait of this entire event, really, is what Chris Zaldane has done. And this is textbook smallmouth fishing 101. There is a ton of current throughout the entire Great Lakes. And Zaldane's fishing these humps that are about 10 to 15 feet of water with isolated boulders with a little bit of scattered rock. But it's the boulders that are the key. And there's beach ball size schools of bait fish that'll get up on top of these humps next to these boulders. And when he makes a precise cast with that spark shad, that's when he'll get a bite. There's another one. Oh gosh. Yep, it feels good. Same exact spot. Woo, that one feels heavy. It's not that big. It's not that big, but we'll take it. Oh, it's a decent one. Just just a two pounder. <laughs> it was fighting like a windsock. That's a nice little one, dark one. But that tells me, I mean, that's two bites right there and three casts, so they're feeding. Another keeper, not a big one for Chris Saldane, who in fact has the big bass of the year. Bassmaster Elite Series, 12 pounder caught Sacramento River Delta. Trying to win this thing, Michael Iaconelli trying to qualify for the classic in this one. Well, we're going to rewind to day number one of this event, which was, a, listen, every minute's been crucial of this event. Day number one, Iaconelli having lower unit problems, gets back out on the water after really standing on shore while his competition is out fishing. He was able to keep his head on straight, get a few fish in the boat, stay in the game. Well, here on the final day, issues yet again. Can you do me a huge favor? I hit a rock. Can you come? Can you come to the next bay up from where you're at? Okay. I'm I'm about halfway back in the bay on the left hand side. Okay. So just yeah, just come come back toward the boat ramp and the first big bay. It's called Egg Harbor. I'm going to be in here. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Let's go fish. Well, you know, I don't know. It's an emergency situation, so I know the bass camera staff guy I know is in a boat. And I just, at least if he's here taking pictures of me and something happens, we can uh, call Trip and get in his boat if the boat stops. So, just a measure of security. So I want to keep fishing. So I'd like to, I like to fish till about quarter after two. And this way, I'm going to still stay in my boat, but this way, if I can get these guys to just stay with me. Can you just stay with me for the next 30 minutes? I, I'm going to have to get ready for the weigh-in. Come on, Sago, please. Please. I mean, the only other thing is unless um, one of those other guys, like, you want to go back and tell Brandon or, or Chris to see if they'll help me? But I don't, I mean, they're fishing. I hate to mess them up, you know? 
But also, Brandon's qualified for the Classic, you know, so... Yeah, like, Brand like Brandon's qualified for the Classic already. Maybe he can come back and just kind of hang out with me for a little while. Do you want to go ask him that? And then if he doesn't want to do it, by the, by the time you get back, I'll, I'll leave and you guys follow me, okay? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mm. Well, I'm actually kept kept his composure during that in a precarious situation on a day full of precarious situations for so many of these anglers so much business yet unfinished we get down to the final minutes of fishing last day of the toyota bassmaster angler of the year championship yeah! Woo! the toyota bassmaster angler of the year championship is brought to you by toyota Bass Pro Shops. Berkeley. And by Evan Williams Bourbon. Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. That's been our home for this week. What a special week. What a great place, just like a picture postcard. Come to life, great people, so much help, so much support. For this Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship, and there's Zaldane trying to win it. We got 30 minutes left to fish here. On the first day of the tournament at 1.30, from 1.30 to 2 o'clock it was on almost every single drop. So it's late in the day. If they're on it like they were the first day, we'll win the tournament right here in the next 30 minutes. There's one. Keeper. Nice one. Stay on there. Yeah. That's my fifth fish. That's my fifth one. It's been tough. First two days were easy sledding for Zaldane. Today, a jerk bait, a swim bait, now a drop shot, but somehow yeah, Zaldane work. has put himself in contention for the win. Yeah, a limit for Zaldane trying to win this three day event. Meanwhile, the season, the entire season on the line for Gerald Swindle. There he is. Come off. Suck, dude. Damn three pounder. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Come up right there to the surface as soon as it broke, you just come off. Bigger than anything we caught today. But we didn't really do nothing wrong. Three pounder, whatever it was, it was a huge, huge missed fish. It will play big for Gerald Swindle. Meanwhile, Mike Iaconelli looking okay for points at this moment, but so many other distractions as he tries to close out this final day. I hit a rock. Can you come to the next bay up from where you're at? Can you just stay with me for the next 30 minutes? Yeah, like, Brand like Brandon's qualified for the Classic already. Maybe he can come back and just kind of hang out with me for a little while. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And this is something, if you really kind of, if you're to look back five to ten years ago, this is something that would spin him out, where you would see a... <laughs> oh, <laughs> a or here. You, you, you want to talk about Machine Head. <laughs> Taking a look at Brandon Polinick going to hang with him for a while now. No. Can you put? Can you stay with me? All right. Here's what I'll do. I'm gonna go up just about another hundred yards. I'll cross over, and then uh, about ten after two, I'm gonna run back. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
There's one. Oh, please. Please stay on, Lord. Please stay on. Never give up! Never give up! That could be the difference maker! Never give up! Well, bought himself a little bit more time. Maybe that was the difference maker for Mike Iaconelli. Put another fish in the boat that could seal his entry in the Geico Bassmaster Classic 2016. Can't complain, we have five fish. <laughs> it's been a fun year, it's been a fun week, and Definitely a good, solid finish uh, to the year, and uh, hopefully we can keep that momentum through the winter and uh, into the Classic in March. There you go. There's the whole season shot down the drain. About 80,000 spent, four bad tournaments, four good tournaments. Find yourself outside the Classic. I worked hard today. I tried my best. Um, I never quit, even after, even after the, you know, the incident. I still didn't quit. We ended up catching one more. And that fish, that two pounder, little two pounder, that could be the difference maker between making the classic and not making it. So you guys have heard me say this before, and I'm gonna say it again. Whether I make this classic or not, I'm gonna say it. Never give up. Keep pushing. Keep casting. When when it looks like there's nothing left, when you got nothing left, looks like the end of the world, keep pushing. You never know. We're going to know in just a moment who's going to make it to the Geico Bassmaster Classic, Mike Iaconelli. Always on message with that uh, that most important message he always gives us, never give up, and he didn't give up today. Look at that, finishes in 39th place, so that two-pounder at the end well may have been the difference maker that got him into the 2016 Bassmaster Classic. It has been an emotional tournament, especially from this man right here from Alabama, Gerald Swindle. He would not, not catch enough fish to get to the 2016 Bassmaster Classic. Oh, the whole year played out in the final hours of this one right here. The same story for Ish Munro. Granted, he started way down near the bottom of this pack. Two good days, days one and two, kept him, well, with some hope in the situation, but this final day was just a defeating one for Ish Munro. Really one of the stories of the entire 2015 Bassmaster Elite Series season. Mark Menendez, well, he's not going to move on to the Classic either. Going to finish down in 50th place due to a rules violation on this final day. Finally, of all those who are going to the uh, Bassmaster Classic in Oklahoma City, we'll take a look right now. Billy McCagrin, the guy on the 40 cut right there. Granted, there's a little jostling points-wise as we finish out the year qualifications-wise, but right now, that's the spot right there. And everyone, Swindle, Rook, Shimizu, Ish Monroe, not making it in. As far as this event, the three days of fishing at the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship, how about this guy, Chris Saldane? 14 pounds and 15 ounces with 53 pounds of four ounces. We say hello to our brand new leader, Chris Saldane. How about Chris Saldane? Hanging tough through three tough days at Sturgeon Bay. Getting himself a win, a win you might almost consider a footnote with all the hoopla around Toyota. Bassmaster Angler of the Year, but a win that counts just the same as any other win on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Bass Pro Shop, Big Bass this final day. Jordan Lee, four pounds and 15 ounces. And Jordan Lee in his rookie season, a fantastic effort. Exactly on. right. He ended up in second place in the Rookie of the Year race behind this man right here. Look at him, palm in that Rookie of the Year trophy. <laughs> Owned it all season long, Did basically. Brent Ayler and hey, let's just break this down. That man right there, he is not a true rookie. He'll say it himself. <laughs> yeah, true. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Brent Ayler with a huge season on the Elite Series, but you have to give it up to Jordan Lee from Alabama. We covered him in the college series. Look, gang, Jordan Lee was your true rookie of the year. Nothing right. against Brent Ayler, but uh, Ayler even tell you, yeah. look, man, give it up to Jordan Lee. Ayler says, I'm not going to disgrace the award by, by not accepting it, right. but hey, give it to Jordan Lee. That's, that's a good way to put it right there. It's been a great, great season. And one more time, Aaron Martins is our headline today and every day just because of that dominating effect he had this year. Exactly right. And really, if you look at the entire face, the face of the Bassmaster Elite Series and who's at the head of it right now being Aaron Martins. Martins, we have never seen it this competitive. Absolutely, and it will be competitive when we start 2016. Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Grand Lake, the Bassmaster Classic. That's when we'll see you next time.
Here's one. Ah! Ah! Come on. That's a freaking war pig.